not planning to acquire enough books to do a recently acquired books for a long time, but I am literally staring at so many piles of books that I have to do at least a part one of this recently acquired books, because if not, I'll be drowning in them. One of the reasons that I have recently acquired so many books was my mother gave us another batch of books that she's cleaned out from her house. She knows to just give us the books that she doesn't want, and there are quite a few of those. So I'm going to go through those first. Most of the books that she gave us were sci-fi books, and one of those was The Day After Tomorrow which is a very cool cover by Robert A. Heinlein. I don't know what this is. I know Heinlein is um, most famous for Starship Troopers, so I'm excited to have another book. This one is really short and really interesting looking, but I don't know what it's about. Another classic sci-fi book that I have no idea what it's about is Voyage from Yesterday by James P. Hogan. This is another really interesting one. It has like a satellite or a space station on the cover. It's longer, but looks pretty cool. There's quite a few more classic sci-fis. One of them is The Fall of the Towers by Samuel R. Delaney. The only reason that I I know Samuel R. Delaney's name is because during Linguathon there is a translated work for him called Babel 17, so that's going to be an interesting one to try. This is one of the longest books and it is like 400 pages, so who knows when I might get to it. Another Robert Heinlein book is Starman Jones. This one has like a weird monkey creature on the cover, so not my favorite, not a big fan of monkeys. Another Robert Heinlein book is Glory Road. This one has like a giant and like a person in a Peter Pan hat. I love it that my mom knows to give me all these classic sci-fi paperbacks. Another sci-fi, I'm not going to call this one a classic, but it is vintage, is Gregory Benford's In Alien Flesh. So I've never heard of this writer and I've never heard of this book, but that could be a cool one to read. On to classic mystery. My mom gave me this copy of Agatha Christie's The Secret Adversary. I think this is the first in the Tommy and Tuppence book, and I'm interested to read this one. Philip Jose Farmer's A Brainstormer in Oz. I've read a couple of Philip Jose Farmer books and I've really, really liked them, his Riverworld series, and I also really liked a collection of short stories that I read from him. I know that he's kind of famous for adopting other styles or writing in the universe of other people. I know that he and Kurt Vonnegut had a falling out because Philip Jose Farmer wrote a novel as a character from Vonnegut's books without his permission, and he was really upset by it. I have that book somewhere. It's kind of hard to get your hands on, and the copy I have is falling apart, so I'm nervous to read it. So maybe it would be a good one to start with this Oz novel, which is definitely an adult version of the Frank Elbaum universe. The last book in the haul from my mom is this X-Files book, Antibodies. I'm not sure if this is an adaptation of an episode or if this is an original work, but it was written by Kevin J. Anderson, who I think is a fairly well-known sci-fi slash horror writer, so this will be an interesting one if I decide to check it out. I picked up a book in a free little library that I've already read, but I really like the cover of this one. It's Death of an Expert Witness by P.D. James. I read this one last year and really enjoyed it. I have a couple of the P.D. James novels in these cover versions, so it never hurts to get another one. At one of our favorite local used bookstores, I picked up New Orleans Beat by Julie Smith. I've never read any Julie Smith, but she has several detective series. In this one, her main detective is Skip Langdon, and she is a homicide detective in New Orleans. I picked it up mostly for the New Orleans settings. I was happy to find Final Girls by Riley Sager in a free little library recently. I've never read any Riley Sager. I've heard a lot about Riley Sager on booktube, and his books seemed really interesting. Final Girls is kind of divisive. Some people love this one, some people hate it, but I figured since it was free, it might be a good place to start. I picked up a few more booktube darlings in free little libraries recently 
personally. One of them is The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. I'm not sure if I really want to read this one. I know that some of my favorite booktubers love it, but it's pretty long and it's not the kind of book that I normally read, so it's hard to say if I'm really going to enjoy this one or not. I try not to pick up books that I'm not going to read. This one was intriguing enough that I wanted to try it. I can always drop it back off if I need to. Another booktube favorite that I found in a little free library is Homegoing by Yagazi. I actually found Yagazi's next novel, um, Transcendent Kingdom, in a free little library last month. And although this one is like a generational historical fiction, which really isn't my cup of tea, everybody has been raving about Yagazi's writing, and I'm really more interested in Transcendent Kingdom, but I like the idea of having both of them to try. If I like one, I'll probably like the other one. Even though I really didn't like The Woman in Cabin 10, I saw this copy of Ruth Ware's The Death of Mrs. Westaway, and I know that sometimes people who don't like The Woman in Cabin 10 do like this book, so I wanted to pick it up and give it a try. Again, it's a little bit long, but after reading an earlier book of Ruth Ware's. I think that the writing is really fast paced and super easy to read, and it seems like there's not a lot in her books to make them go slowly, so I wanted to pick this one up and give Ruth Ware another try. I've only read one Stephen King book, but when I saw this copy of The Long Walk, my husband had just told me about this book and what it was about, and we were discussing it. It sounded really interesting. I've been seeing a lot of people read it on booktube, and I wanted to pick it up, but I realized that it's one of those like long paperbacks with only a few words on each page. So I'm actually going to drop this one back off in a free little library and keep my eye out for a different edition. I've heard a lot about Bernadine Evaristo on booktube, but I haven't heard a lot about this book, Blonde Roots. This is an alternate history historic fiction, and even though I'm more interested in some of Bernadine's other works, I thought I would pick this one up to give a try. This one was also in a free little library. The last book that I picked up in a little free library that is all the rave on booktube is a copy of Luster by Raven Leilani. This book also has a lot of differing opinions. I recently watched a review where someone said there's a lot of violence in this book, which no other reviewer had said. So I am more hesitant now than when I picked this up earlier in April to read, but it's so short and it's getting such critical acclaim that I would like to read it one day. I'm going to stop there and save the other books that I have for another time. I'll definitely insert some of my favorite little free libraries that I visited recently. Let me know if you've read any of these books, if you've found some interesting little free library books recently, or if you've done my little library tag. If you haven't, head over to my channel and find it. It's really short and easy, but little libraries are one of my favorite things right now, and so I would love to hear other people's thoughts on them. Thanks so much. Bye! What's the one where it's like a haunted house and then the parents leave and the girl has to go back? Whatever. 